Hi. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Welcome to the newest episode of the Shack News Showcase. Are we done with this? Yeah, we can move on. Recently, Bethesda released their announcement trailer for Fallout 4, and it was amazing. I thought we were done with this. Oh, right. Sorry. Joe and I are going to sit down on this couch and offer some of our input. Why are you putting on a hat? What's going on? Because I want our silhouettes to be distinct. For what? Come on, Tom Servo. We got a series rip off. We're here because I'm so excited about the Fallout 4 trailer. You literally couldn't stop talking about it. So we figured let's be in front of a camera and talk about this trailer. Sort of in front of a camera, actually. Kind of. We're here in a movie theater. Pretty much. To yeah. watch this. We actually rented out a movie theater. No, we huge, didn't. Uh, uh, well, I guess we're not going to keep that lie going. <laughs> All right. Well, then. Let's. <laughs> I don't want to lie to the people. Uh huh. Okay. okay. So make you it know magical, what? Let's let's not. We're just we're, we're wasting time. Let's just go right into this. Let's freaking watch it. Okay. Dog meat. That's dog meat. It's got to be dog meat. Um, and he can talk. He's talking. Yeah, he does. He chats. He got a voice. He has a voice. He finally has a voice. Um, there it is. Fallout Four. Fallout Four. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so, I think this is Boston. I have a theory. And a lot of people might disagree with me. I think Fallout 4 is a prequel to all the other Fallout games. Because it seems like with this trailer, hear me out, hear me out, because okay. I know you're a big fan of Fallout and you're going to immediately diss me. <laughs> so I believe that this this little adorable family right here, unit, right. is uh, your parents, and that's you. Right, that's right. you in the crib. Right. Now you're going to say to yourself, oh, well, you know, what what happened? And yada, yada, yada. So we can, we can jump back near the end of the trailer, which we see the bomb drop, and right over there we have Mama, and we have Papa, and we have a little baby boy or baby girl. I don't know if you can change the thing for right. it. So you can see right here that Mama and Papa are standing right on top of the vault. Right. So it is possible that, you know, with this shockwave com coming in like that, uh, you and maybe your mom or your dad fall in and somehow you survive. Right. So we're seeing a lot of shots of, you know, uh, Vault 111 opening up. We're seeing, you know, right during the explosion. So it seems like it may be closer to the actual uh, nuclear touchdown, I right. feel. I, we sort of talked about this already. I, I disagree only because generally, it, it, if the vault opened at any point after the bomb dropped, they're just they're pretty much done. Mm -hmm. um, historically, I guess in the game, whenever you find like a broken down vault or like an exploded vault or an empty vault, it's normally because they opened it too early and then they're inhabited. Something happened. Okay. Um, one thing that I will mention negatively, though, I'm not completely like fanboyish, only a little bit, but. Uh, some of the graphical stuff, if you like, look at some of the flashbacks, mm -hmm. I, I feel like maybe they could have... They've never really been great with character models or anything like that. Right, well, But yeah. I was expecting I was expecting more. I was expecting a, a, a huge advancement, and we haven't really seen a lot, so I'm going to hold my judgment. I'm going to okay. reserve my judgment, but I really hope that that's just because it's a flashback and they didn't necessarily spend a lot of time working on that mm -hmm. because it's not actually going to be in the game. That's what leads me to believe that flashback Hopefully. stuff... Doesn't but matter. they should have maybe tweaked it a little bit for the announcement trailer. Yes, it was noticeably worse. Then, as the trailer goes on, you see some of those scenes and it looks great. They show the city and all that stuff. It looks great, but that flashback stuff, I feel like they could have done it better, and that's throwing me off a little bit. It makes me a little scared. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it was a, it was a grand old time, and I yeah. cannot wait to get to E3 and hopefully see some more. I, yep. he I hear there might be some hands-on action, which mm -hmm. would be hey, you know, incredible. You know, yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but other than that, I'm, yeah. this is going to be great. Okay, well, you know, cool. once we find out more stuff about Fallout, we'll be sure to tell you guys yes. about all the, the fun Fallouty things. We're not the only ones who had fun with this trailer. As per usual, people on the internet got a hold of it and everyone had an opinion. Beautiful, colorful, disgusting opinions. So we compiled a list of some of the best ones and we're gonna show them to you. As a dramatic performance. <sighs> Scene. If you don't watch this every day till release, you're not that excited. What the f they didn't say when it's due to be released? 
I drizzled a little in my birdie pants. Cried a little bit when I saw this, not even ashamed to admit it. Stop defending this game's relatively poor graphics. The developer is supposed to make a product the fans will enjoy in every aspect. You f***ing idiots! They have a right to complain! Now usually you, you breathe after a sentence, but this is a complete run-on sentence, so I'm gonna try and do this all in one breath. Fuck you, Bethesda. You have no idea how much money you'll be missing out on for releasing this on 360 and PS3. I don't give a on your excuses. This game could easily run on my 360 at 1080p. It works really well still, so I don't see the issue here. Even if you have to cut content for it to work, make it happen, because next gen consoles, they suck no worthwhile games. <sighs> I'm a good barga. I have never played any of the Fallout games, but I will play this. If that trailer don't give you pricklies on your neck, you're not a Fallout fan and are hardcore RPGer. It doesn't matter how many times I watch it, I still get f***ing goosebumps. And scene. So Fallout has pretty much taken over my life again. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, though I do feel like we're forgetting about something. I don't know, it might be Skylanders related or something. We are meeting up with them at E3. Holy crap, E3's next week. Yeah, it, it's, are, are you ready? Uh, clearly I'm not if I'm currently freaking out about this. So I still have to pack. Oh, where are all my ties? Uh, can, you, can you show them my top five as I, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. E3 is barreling at us faster than Sonic on a slip and slide. So while we frantically try to get ready for the biggest week in the video game industry, we're going to take a moment and reminisce about past E3s. Here are the top five best moments of past E3s. E3 is oddly not really for the fans. I mean, it is, but it isn't. A lot of the press conferences are mainly for, well, the press. Many conferences are just talking about the hardware, the expected games, and when we're expected to see them. Which can be interesting, but not all the time. However, in 2010, Kevin Butler walked onto the Sony stage and gritted a speech, which ended with a fantastic finisher. Because every gamer is a true gamer. Motion gamers, sitting gamers, everyone. And though we may pledge fanboy allegiances to different flags, deep down inside we all serve one master, one king. And his name is Gaming. Forever may he reign! I'm almost half sorry for putting this on the list, but it had to be mentioned. During the demonstration of We Fit, Reggie uttered those infamous words. My you body, ready, my body is ready. <laughs> I, uh... Then, well, the rest is history. This one may need a little context. Before Twilight Princess, the latest 3D Zelda game was Wind Waker, which was a fantastic game, but it wasn't what people expected. So when the crowd finally saw the trailer for Twilight Princess, they went bananas. Topping it off with Miyamoto walking on stage, smiling ear to ear with a Hylian shield and Master Sword. If you ever needed an example of pure happiness, use this one. At E3, we're used to seeing things that won't come out for some time, usually in the same year, and sometimes not. And it's always been like this. But in 1995, much to everyone's surprise, Sega dropped the mother of all bombs. During their press conference, Sega revealed that the Sega Saturn will be available immediately, which caused many gamers to run out of their houses and into stores. Sega seemed to be dominating E3 in 1995. Steve Race, the president of Sony America, stole the entire show by uttering one simple word. $2.99. Yup, that's it. This made the PlayStation a hundred dollars cheaper than the Sega Saturn. Coupled with the fact that the Sega Saturn didn't really have a lot of games for launch, pretty much paved the way for the ultimate success of the PlayStation.
Well, that's all the time we have for the episode. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And for all your gaming needs, be sure to head over to shacknews.com. Did you pack? No, I was crying during that last segment. Me. Sorry that you're not. King, are you serious? Give me a couple months. <laughs> Punk ass. Give me a couple months. I already have the hair for the Scorpion King. No. I got the skin color. I'm halfway there. No, that's not. No, no. You don't understand. You have to be the Scorpion King. Listen. It goes through your blood, bro. I'm gonna say this. I'm more of a Scorpion King than you are. I never I never claimed that I'm a Scorpion right. King, though. So I just want now, to... Am I parading around <laughs> the streets of New Jersey saying that I am the Scorpion King? I just wanted to make sure that we were all clear there. I am more of a scorpion king than you are. That's like me saying I'm more of a squid than you. You're not. But that, that's about as you as a scorpion king.